Hello, everyone. Welcome to Explore a Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and I am so glad that you are able to join us today. For all of those celebrating Lunar and Chinese New Year, we send you wishes of gentleness and tenderness for the Year of the Rabbit. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for a short lesson and time for your questions. This school year each month is organized around a specific theme. And for January, we are exploring the importance of storytelling, especially using it as a tool to help us understand the needs of each other and wildlife and our world. Today, our explorer is Ashley Lamb Sinclair. Ashley is an award-winning educator, author, and a speaker with a passion for bringing people together to make important changes, especially in the realm of education. Whether it's working on policies to make education better or creating a tech platform to elevate creative ideas for educators, Ashley cares about how students and teachers are creating, dreaming, and learning across the United States. Today, Ashley will share about the team that she co-leads called 2,892 Miles to Go, Geographic Walk for Justice, and how this team works to share wisdom and stories from neighbor to neighbor across the United States. But before we get into today's lesson, let's welcome our registered viewers and give a special shout out around the globe to Parkview Elementary, Oregon Episcopal School, Mays Elementary, Sandy Lake Academy, Adelanto Elementary, Bertrand Spencer Elementary, Reed Elementary, Verdala International School, Stephanie Elementary, and of course, our homeschool families and friends out there. We are thrilled to have you here. And with that, let's turn this Explorer classroom over to our Explorer, Ashley, who's going to share about stories and wisdom from the land around us. Ashley, take it away. Thank you, Jennifer, and nice to see everyone this Monday morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. And um, I'm going to talk to you today about, um, as Jennifer said, stories around us. Um, and so let me share my screen and we'll get into it. We're also going to play a game, which I'm really excited to do. So let's um, get started here. Okay, all right, so I um, support a program called 2892 Miles to Go. And what that means is that there are 2,892 miles from one end of the United States to another. Of course, it's all debatable depending on what point you're looking at, but we call ourselves 20. 892 because these are individuals, storytellers who talk about stories that have often been um, unacknowledged or mistold or neglected. And so they all come together as a part of this project to talk about those stories that they want to share. And so this is what we mean when we talk about 2892. Think about this. If you were to walk from one end of the United States to another, what do you think you might see? You can think about that. What kinds of things do you think you would see? You might see landmarks, right? You might see um, nature, forests, you know, fields, <clears throat> mountains, rivers. You'll also see cities and communities and people in those cities and communities who have been there potentially for generations. And all of these places have stories that have come from the beginning of this land's existence and the beginning of people living here. And now we have the honor of being able to recover those and learn from them. And so you also will pick up stories, all kinds of stories. In fact, you probably have stories around you right now. Wherever you are, there are probably stories that you don't necessarily think about on your way to school every day, on your way to the grocery, and we can talk about those in a second. 
And so let's think about this. We're going to play a game to see if you can spot some of the stories within our 2892 sites. And we're going to um, play a little guessing game here. So let's get started. Okay, now I'm going to tell you some stories of some of our places and people, but I want to make sure that I say the stories correctly. So I have some notes here I'm going to read from, even though I know the stories pretty well, I want to make sure that I do it correctly. So what you're looking at here, this is a cowboy named Matthew Bones Hooks. He was born in 1867 and was the son of people who were formerly enslaved and freed and then moved and immigrated. He was a pioneer known as the best horse breaker in the area. By the age of nine, he was driving chuck wagons for local cattlemen. One of the first black cowboys to work alongside white people as a ranch hand, he also founded an entire community for his black neighbors. He spent the rest of his life growing this community, including creating community centers and youth programs, which continue today. And now there is a park named in his honor. So where do you think Matthew Bones Hooks lived and his park stands today? Raise your hand if you think it's Hawaii. Well, couple people, couple people. What if you, do you think it's Kentucky? Let's see. No. Oh, a couple people. What about Minnesota? No. Oklahoma? Maybe. Who says Texas? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Matthew Bones Hooks lived in Amarillo, Texas, and he founded an amazing community there called North Heights, which still stands today and is an exciting place to learn more about cowboys, especially cowboys like Matthew Bones Hooks, who were black and other people of color, including even women. And so that is a lot of stories that maybe we don't necessarily think about from Texas. Okay, next one. This young girl's name is Sarah Rector. Okay, so let's learn about her. In 1913, Sarah Rector became the world's richest young black lady at the age of 12 years old. She was a millionaire. She lived in a part of the country where many black people were very wealthy landowners and the land she owned was very rich with oil. She was a descendant of the Muscogee Creek Nation and the land was allotted to her family by the US government after the Treaty of 1866. Booker T. Washington and W.E. E.B. Du Bois came to her aid when white oil magnates mismanaged her funds. They also helped her move away to attend the Tuskegee Institute where she graduated and lived a glamorous life throwing jazz parties all the way into adulthood with famous musicians like Duke Ellington. So where do you think that Sarah Rector, the world's richest 12 year old lived? Raise your hand if you think she lived in Texas too. No, what about Minnesota? Couple people, what about Hawaii? No, Kentucky? What about Oklahoma? Yes. Yes, Sarah Rector lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where before Oklahoma was a state, the majority of the land was actually owned by Black people. So it's a really amazing story. And Dr. Odawale, Alicia, who is here, she's going to talk more about that on Thursday with her friend and colleague, Christy Williams, one of our storytellers. And they're going to explore more about Hawaii, or I'm sorry, Oklahoma, which is going to be really fun. Okay, next one. All right, what do we have? Okay, this is a koa tree. It is one of the strongest trees in the forest. It provides food, shade, shelter, and oxygen to the diverse flora and fauna. 
It distributes nutrients and filters pollutants through the soil. In the native language where this tree mostly stands, koa means brave, bold, fearless, and warrior. The wood from this tree was used to build strong canoes that could traverse oceans and withstand the strength of the waves. Its seed cannot be planted. Even if the seeds fall on the forest floor, it cannot sprout. It has to go through a process called scarification, which means that it has to be cut or gashed in order to grow. And, sorry, my notes. And so it has to go through this process in order to grow. It cannot be planted, which is one of the things that makes it unique and interesting. So where do you think the koa tree is from? Is it from Texas? Is it from Kentucky, Minnesota, Oklahoma? Who says Hawaii? Correct. The koa tree is in Hawaii, and it is a sacred tree that is very important to the history and culture of the land there. All right. Next, this person's name is Jimmy Lee. Jimmy Lee was one of the most respected baseball, basketball, and football officials um, in his state. He was the first Black American to ever official Big Ten baseball games. He was a hard worker, refereeing 20 to 40 district tournaments and up to 10 regional tournaments a year. And when the Negro League baseball teams came through town on their barnstorming trips, he was the only referee they would call upon. Barnstorming is when the Negro Baseball League would play their own games rather than the, with the organized league. Now there are community centers honoring Jimmy Lee in his home community. Where do you think Jimmy Lee is from? Hawaii? Texas? Kentucky? Oklahoma? Oh, Kentucky. Couple, couple guesses there. Minnesota? Minnesota. Jimmy Lee is from a town in Minnesota. I'm sorry, a community in St. Paul called Rondo. Rondo is a predominantly Black community that was established during the Great Migration and still stands today. And there is amazing work of activists and other leaders like Jimmy Lee who still live there and work today. Okay, last one. The Western Branch Library was established in 1905, and it became the first library in the nation to serve the Black community exclusively. And it was the first one to hire an all-Black member staff. Above the door, a sign read, knowledge is power, and the space was a source of comfort and pride for its community. Reverend Thomas Fountain Blue led the library, and created a children's storytelling contest, gaining national recognition. There was also a prominent debating club where participants went on to enroll in many prestigious universities. And fun fact, in 2001, the recording artist Prince made a secret donation to this branch to keep it from closing. And today it still stands as an important place in the place in the community where it is. Where do you think this library is? Hawaii? Minnesota? Texas? Oklahoma? Who says Kentucky? Correct. The Western Branch Library is in Louisville, Kentucky and was the first library exclusively for Black Americans in the entire United States. Okay, so now we've talked about some stories where 2892 storytellers are, but what stories do you think there are where you live? Something to think about. So when we finish today, I want you to do consider a couple of things in order to uncover stories where you are. You can map these in your minds to start. So every day you go on a route 
you see street signs, you see buildings, you see trees like the koa tree, you see unique plants that maybe only grow where you are. There are people who came before you who live where you are. So think about it. What do you see every day on your daily route when you go to school, when you go to the grocery store, to the library, your after school activities? Look out the window. As you're walking down the street, start to look around and then map and draw what you see in your mind's eye. And then ask yourself these questions. What do you think those things looked like a hundred years ago or a thousand or even a hundred thousand years ago? What do you think the land around you on your daily route might've looked like? What people or events could be connected with the place? And then you can write and draw what you imagine. So start to imagine what is the, what are the stories around you? And then you can start to ask some questions, which questions are where everything begins with 2892, curiosity and asking questions. What questions could you ask to learn more about these sites along your route and the history of these places? Where could you go in your community to learn more? Are there storytellers like Dr. Odawale here that are in your community who are professors or teachers or librarians or even the person who works at the grocery store? Maybe they have stories to tell that you hadn't thought about before. Start to think about who you could ask. And then as you're making, making your mind map, write down any questions or ideas that come to mind so that you can learn more about the stories where you are. But most importantly, as you leave this session today and you go about your day, take these three tips with you. Get curious about what is around you, okay? Start to ask questions about where did this come from? Why is this here? Why, who maybe are we not talking about when we talk about these places? Who's being left out of the story? And then make a plan. You are the person who can start to uncover these stories. And when you find them and you tell other people, that changes everything because that makes people like Sarah Rector and Bones Hooks come alive. So they can be in the textbooks that you read in school and know that you are important to making sure that these stories happen and they get reintroduced in bigger and more important ways because you never know what stories are around you. And I am really excited to learn what you uncover. Thank you for listening today. Well, friends, that's the end of our show today. I would love to thank our explorers. You got a sneak peek of Alicia, but we also have Ashley. Thank you for your time and expertise. Thank you for having me. It's great to see all your faces. I'd also like to thank all of our students and educators and families out there who are thinking about the stories that might not be widely known. And just like our last friend said, you can join at any age and you are an important part of it. Like Ashley said earlier, you matter. Well, if you enjoyed today and you're thinking, I wanna do this again, we have another event next Monday for ages three through eight. We're going to be joined by explorer Gibbs Kuguru and he goes diving with sharks. And he's gonna tell us that he's learned some life lessons from sharks. He's even learned something about humans by studying sharks. So go ahead and register for this event and more. Go to natgeoed.org backslash explore classroom. We've got lots of goodies there. For teachers, we've got an interactive guide that you can share with your students for every one of our episodes. And you can also find the Explore Mindset in Action Guide. Um, with a teacher edition. Lots of really great things. And don't forget Ashley and Alicia's website. It's 2982walk.org. Did I get the numbers right? 2892walk.org. Yes. 2892. Oh, it's like dialing the wrong phone number. All right. 2892walk.org. Well, everyone stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you next time. Bye.